Welcome to our next edition of a Well Done Professional Podcast, and I am super excited. Today, I have Anne Franz, who is the Executive Director of the new NEW Manufacturing Alliance. So welcome, Anne. Thank you. Glad to be here. So you've been the leader of the Alliance for a long time. So tell, for those that are not as familiar with the Manufacturing Alliance, tell our listeners kind of what the Alliance the purpose of the Alliance, the history of the Alliance, just kind of give us a lens on that. Sure. Well, I was there from the beginning, so it's just really exciting looking back 14 years where we are now. Um, Really, it started as just a working committee. I was hired to fulfill a grant that Northeast Wisconsin Technical College received from the Bay Area Workforce Development Board. A lot of people don't know what the Workforce Development Boards are, I didn't know until they started paying me, (laughs) and then I got to know them. And so what they are is a nonprofit organization that receives federal tax dollars to really fund a lot of the staff at job centers. Plus, they also provide training dollars for people to go back and get their college degree. And they thought, you know what, it'd be really good to know what businesses are doing in terms of hiring. So when we invest in people going back to college, they have a job on the other end makes sense, doesn't it? And so they wanted to have somebody to talk to CEOs about their current and future workforce needs. And they didn't want to hire someone because they didn't know for sure if it was going to work or not. So they contracted with the tech college to have somebody who would be totally paid by the workforce board, but would serve as that conduit. So I was hired in November of 2005 to fulfill that role. And of course, you know, not many CEOs wanted to talk to me, (laughs) but thankfully one did. And that was Paul Rauscher. And he is the owner of EMT International in Hobart. And what was really cool was when I met with them, I was, I didn't know anything about manufacturing. And so at the time there was a real huge need for welders. And I'm like, so how many welders do you need? And he's like, I don't need welders. (laughs) I just assumed every manufacturer need welders. Well, was I wrong? So, but he was really concerned about workforce. And that first meeting in January 6th of 2006, um, talking to him, I'm like, well, maybe I can bring some people together to talk to you a little bit more about this issue you're having and finding talent. So um, we, January 31st, 2006, we brought together the tech uh, college presidents along with Chamber of Commerce, some other people, along with the Workforce Board. And it was Jeff Raffin, the president of Northeast Wisconsin Technical College, that told Paul, you know what? This is your issue. You manufacturers need to get together and really work on changing the image. And Paul, to his credit, said, you know what? You're right. We really need to bring industry together to work on this problem. And because of that, Um, We got some people together and in June of 2006 had 12 companies that started this working committee and now we have over 300 members, over 190 of them being manufacturers. So that's kind of the evolution of the organization. And that's amazing. And, you know, obviously we're members and you guys do just amazing, amazing work. So 14 years is a long time. What changes have you seen from, you know, that early beginning of the 12 guys sitting in a room trying to figure out how to, how to find great talent to what the organization is today? Yeah, a lot. Um, one, again, we were just a working committee. I never thought we would be a 501c3 and a 501c6, um, as well as I really have seen a huge, huge difference in K-12 working in uh, partnership with um, industry. Um, Early on, there wasn't a lot of interest from K-12 in connecting. And, you know, manufacturers were used to pointing the finger at K-12, you need to get us talent, instead of with a handout saying, how can we help you? And it was really um, one of our board chairs, Mark Kaiser, the president and owner of Lindquist Machine, when he was a chair of our organization, he's like, you know what, we're going to focus a lot of energy on K-12. 
and we are going to go to them and say, hey, you know what, you had us at hello. What do you need from us? And so we set up a half day summit where we actually paid the sub costs for educators to come and have that conversation. And we just asked them questions and how can we help you? And now everything has changed. Our relationship with K-12 is so much better than ever before. Each year we have a big awards dinner. In fact, this will be the ninth year called the Excellence in Manufacturing K-12 Partnership Awards. And last year's event, we had over 400 people attend, recognizing all the good work that these two groups are doing together. So K-12 is a huge thing. Plus, we're seeing that a lot of schools are now willing to open up more tech ed programs. In fact, so much now there's a shortage of tech ed teachers. So now, besides our regular scholarships, we're now paying scholarships for people to go and get a degree to be a tech ed teacher. Another exciting thing over the years is we kept track of how many people enrolled in the tech colleges for like welding and machining. So remember my question to Paul Rauscher about welders? <laughs> well, we've been tracking how many people enrolled in welding at the four tech colleges. And in 2005, before we started, there were 193 people enrolled in welding. This past year, there were 998. That's amazing. 2005, um, there were no four-year degree um, at UW-Green Bay or UW-Oshkosh for engineering. And when you think about it, 23% of all our jobs are in engineer, I mean, in manufacturing. So we worked with New Era, a partnership of the two and four year public institution presidents um, many years ago um, to form uh, electrical engineering technology degree, environmental engineering technology, as well as a mechanical engineer technology degree. And now there's over 300 students enrolled in those degrees. So those are some of the things that have been the biggest changes. Well, and that's such a significant impact to the economy around here. I mean, I remember um, when I was on Fox Valley Tech uh, Board of Trustees, that was one of the things that I was most amazed by is how uh, the education really embraces industry and what they truly need for um, a workforce. And, and I, I've been to the awards banquet and the stories of those partnerships with K through 12 are just incredibly, incredibly touching. So um, that's, that's been a great, great ad. And I know that, it, that your work and the work that um, the manufacturers independently are doing with K through 12 really is making a difference and just the numbers speak for themselves. So obviously we've got to talk about my least favorite topic, which is COVID-19. I think everybody's getting tired of COVID-19, but it's a reality. Um, you know, and I think, how have you seen, what are some of the changes that have happened within manufacturing as it relates to the fact that we have this COVID-19 virus? And what are, um, what is the Manufacturing Alliance doing to assist the manufacturers or what, what suggestions are you making for that group of, of uh, industry professionals? It's funny, um, March 10th, I went to Ireland for vacation and um, I'm supposed to stay there till the 18th, came back a little early and wow, the world sure changed a lot. And so the good news for manufacturing is over 95%, I would say, were deemed essential. And when you think of 23% of all our jobs are in manufacturing, that's critically important to our um, economy here. And so most were open um, and still are open, um, but what they've had to do is pivot. Um, what I think is really amazing about manufacturing is they've always um, have had safety as one of their real cornerstones of what they do. So they were at least po poised to really look at safety. It wasn't a new concept. So we found a lot of companies that really, uh, really took it very serious, where they did temperature checks, they made sure that they could develop um, social distancing on the plant floor which can be a little bit more difficult. But I think, again, because safety has always been such an important pillar to manufacturers, 
they were really able to do the things necessary really quickly. So that was great. And we did see a lot of manufacturers pivot on even what they make. So example, Elevate 97 makes in part exhibit systems, but now they're making face shields. Um, looking at how they do business, um, Carnivore Meats, for example, is a um, pet food company. And the owner saw their ultraviolet sterilization machine could be used at healthcare clinics to clean PPE. So then they could be used more than once. And he donated his machine. We've seen companies donate their own PPE like Walker Forge for their hospitals, especially about a month or two ago when it was so hard to find PPE. So I think manufacturers have really, um, really made a difference in providing products that we need. Uh, Neela say Georgia Pacific's toilet paper was, is, is and has been <laughs> very popular. And um, so overall, I think um, our manufacturers have really made a difference in our community staying open to help people stay employed. That's one of the things that I love about Wisconsin is, you know, it, it would be easy for people to want to hoard those things or, um, you know, say, we're just going to worry about our own business. And a couple of things that I observed, one is much to you, what you're saying is all the manufacturers really stepped up and said, how can we help? And then you sort of became, this manufacturing alliance became sort of the hub for shared best practices. So as I watched information that you were pushing out, it was, here's what one manufacturer is doing. You can adopt these same practices, which I thought was phenomenal that people didn't have to keep reinventing or keep being innovative, that, that there was a lot of best practices being shared. So I want to give you kudos for doing that because I think it really helped a lot of um, our manufacturing community and the community at large because everybody sort of championed, we're all in this together as opposed to we're all fighting this individually. So that was great. Yeah, that's what's so amazing about these manufacturers. They really work collaboratively. And so they were willing to share their best practices. So companies didn't have to try to figure it out themselves. Plus we also helped them connect to PPE um, because especially a few weeks ago, it was really hard to find. So really bringing the industry together to work together on this really difficult issue that none of us have experienced. Right. So enough on COVID. We, could, we, we get inundated by that all the time. So we'll move on. I, I want to give you kudos. You, um, looking at everything you've done, you've, you've been a wonderful leader, tremendously successful. You know, when you think about your career, especially the 14 years with the Alliance, what are you most proud of, Anne? I think what I'm most proud of is being a good listener. You know, a lot of the great idea uh, programs that we have were not my idea, but I was a good listener, took those ideas, and then helped create them. Because I always say, you know, our manufacturers have a day job. And they can't be doing all this work that the Alliance is doing. But then taking those ideas. Um, one of the things that I laugh about is my board often would say to me, you know what, Ann, that's never going to work. <laughs> and then a, a, examples of that Manufacturing First Expo and Conference. Um, this is the 10th year. And when I approached the board about that idea, um, they said, you know what, Ann, that's, that's never, no one's going to go to something like that. Well, last year's event, we had over 1,800 people attend. Uh, so I guess somebody showed up. <laughs> well, and I love the fact that you're visionary on that kind of thing. I mean, because I do think that we get so, um, I guess, focused on the task at hand and work and the things that we have to accomplish. So to have somebody like you who says, let's, let's try this, and then it become what it what it is i mean i've attended every year and it's just a great event and competitors are right beside each other shaking hands and it's just it's a really really nice collaborative day so yeah kudos and it'll be interesting to see how that comes off this year mm -hmm. um we're having some contingency plans but um we really if the football season with 70 80 000 people 
are moving forward feeling that they can have that, I, we are hopeful that we should too. I agree. I agree. So um, I always ask this question because I think it's, it's an interesting question. You know, they always ask the president after 100 days, um, what was your biggest surprise in being president? Um, and, and I think it was Obama who said, you know, I didn't realize that the by the time the issues get to me, the problems get to me, they're of national concern. There is no low hanging fruit of problems to solve. So for you as a leader, uh, what has been your biggest surprise over time? Um, I think there's two things. One, when we started out, this is really just a working committee. And now to be an organization where our members employ over half of the manufacturing workforce in our region is pretty mind boggling. Um, another thing is we have been seen as a best practice both statewide, nationally and internationally. So I have traveled all over the country and even Italy on how to start public private partnerships. And um, I never thought that was going to happen. That's amazing. So um, on the other side, we always have things that if, if we could do it over again, we'd love to have an opportunity to fix something. So what's, what's Anne's one do-over that if you could change something, you'd do it? You know, uh, with do-overs, there's always learning. And so honestly, there's nothing I would have done over. Um, we've had lots of failures, <laughs> but in those failures, we've learned a lot. For example, internship draft day. The first time we tried to hold it in March at Lambeau Field it was called um, Intern to Connect. Um, we were going to spend $10,000 and we had like 20 students registered. It was an epic failure. But then we brought it back to our task force and um, one of our task force members, Brandon Beard from Pioneer Metal Finishings, like, hey, if we have it at Lambeau, why don't we call it a draft? And that spurred more and more ideas. And now we've done that event, I think, for the last six years, and it's been a great success. So, you know, I really think in all those failures, you learn something. And if you had done it, you wouldn't have learned those lessons. Right. Nope. There's no, no doubt the best teacher is when things don't go perfect, not when they always go perfect. Um, key learnings. I mean, obviously, the longer tenure we have in your organization, my organization, as a leader, the more we learn about what it means to be a good leader versus not. So um, when you think about key learnings in your career, what would be some of the things that, that stand out? Mm -hmm. You know, I think I've really learned a lot about the importance of collaboration. And more heads are better than one, right? That's saying. And so every really successful program we've ever developed was not Anne Franz's idea. It was a group of individuals that created together these events. So I just think it's so important to bring people together to work on these activities. Yeah, that's great advice. So I know you are extremely busy. I see you all over. Um, how do you find balance? I mean, I think that as, as a leader of any organization, that's one of our greatest challenges is we have a personal life and we have a professional life. And sometimes those lines get really blurred. So how do you find balance in your life? Mm -hmm. Well, if you'd ask my husband, he would laugh. If you, <laughs> I say you don't have any. as balanced as um, I should be. However, the one thing that I hold true to um, religiously is that one day a week, I do not look at my emails or do anything work-related. And that can be a Saturday or a Sunday, um, but I hold that figure, if God said we need one day of rest, I think you might know something. <laughs> so yeah. that's one thing yeah. that's really helped me. Really, great. yeah, unplug one day a week. Yeah, and, and two, it kind of rejuvenates your spirit to kind of get into the fight again, right, and, and have a really busy week. No, that's great advice. So we have a lot of young listeners who, who watch our podcast who are maybe not in a leadership role or don't have direct reports yet, but certainly aspire to that. 
you know, what would what would today's Anne Franz tell, you know, the younger Anne Franz, if you could give some advice, what would that be? Mm -hmm. To really value listening and learning. Um, and not worry so much about who gets the credit. Um, our organization, for many, many years, I was not seen as the executive director. I just worked in the background making hopefully things happen from the ideas uh, that were generated by the task forces. So spending the time really listening and learning from the people that you work with. That's great advice. Not always easy for the younger generation. They they want to jump ahead and they're, they're, I always think of them as like young thoroughbreds. They're excited and so that's great advice to just really pause and, and reflect on what are the key learnings and then implement that. So that's great. Um, trade secrets. I don't want to give away anything that the Alliance is, is doing that would obviously compromise some of your, your trade secrets. But what do you think, if you, had a, if you had a crystal ball and could see the next three to five years, what are some of the things that you think could potentially happen? Mm -hmm. um, we continue need to look at how we can add value to our members. Our vision statement is that every Northeast Wisconsin manufacturer will find the talent it needs. So by looking at that, how do we find talent here? And then looking outward, how do we find talent from regions outside our region, and bring them here? Um, we're also looking at that worker's whole life cycle from elementary school to retirement. So looking at how we can even reach down even earlier, we've been focused a lot on middle and high school but even now elementary. And then we are going to be um, launching a program for helping people who are about to retire and understanding you know, social security and Medicare and all those things. There's no one-stop shop. So um, you're gonna be launching in the fall a uh, uh, retirement readiness series to really help people maneuver all that. So those are some of the things uh, that we're thinking about. Plus, another important aspect is Industry 4.0. Um, we know that technology is going to help us with some of the workforce shortage, and we know that our companies need to do business smarter because they're not just competing with the business down the street, but globally. So um, we are going to be focused um, on Industry 4.0 and helping educate our employers. So those are a few of the little areas. Well, all of them are significant. And, and I have to say, Anne, you know, uh, first of all, we're very proud to be a member of the Alliance, but even more so than that, when I think about um, just the fact that you really, really help to put manufacturing as a significant industry, a potential for employment, and that people can have really, really great jobs in manufacturing and it isn't just dirty and all of the things that is that outward perception. Um, you guys have done amazing work as, as it relates to that. And um, I just want to say thank you on behalf of Northeast Wisconsin and Wisconsin as a whole because I think the work you're doing is truly, truly making a difference, even for us being able to get people excited about coming to our area in manufacturing. Um, it's just super easy to tie them in, and, and uh, we know that it's making a difference. So this has been just a delight to have you as a guest. And um, do you want to just give a quick uh, website address so they know how to reach you if needed? Sure. Um, our website is new MFG, like manufacturing abbreviated, alliance.org. Well, thank you, Anne. This has been delightful. And... Um, good luck in all the futuristic things. I think it sounds fabulous. Take care. Thank you so much.